What's going on, everybody? Special guest back here again, Jason Beatty, covers UCF and the Orlando Sentinel, here to talk about Matt Lee, Miami's newest transfer at center. Jason, let's let's get right into it at center here. Uh, what can you tell us about Matt? We'll certainly break down kind of the type of player he's been over his career and maybe some certain details. But again, what kind of players is Miami getting with Matt here? Yeah, they're getting a really high quality player. Um, you know, Matt really had, you know, like you said, we'll dive into his career and how it transpired and whatnot. But Matt, the last couple of years, especially this past season, was one of the best centers in the country. Um, and really, you know, he committed no penalties. He was one of the highest rated centers by pro football focus, you know, all conference player. Um, and really was just someone you almost maybe took for granted by some UCF fans at that center position. I mean, there was maybe one mistake he committed, I remember. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, it was like a miscommunication between him and John Rice Plumley. But that was like one play at Navy early in the season. Beyond that, I mean, he had, you know, really close to nearly perfect season um, at center and last year as well. I mean, he was just a really high quality center, really physical guy, you know, smart, knows the playbook, really communicates, a leader on and off the field. Uh, so Miami is getting just a, a high quality NFL caliber player, Matt Lee. Let's stay with those pro football focus numbers again. I, I think it's been kind of well documented. If you haven't seen it yet or heard about it, he's number three center in the country last year, 83.6. It's the highest offensive player graded by UCF there. Uh, just breaking it down a little bit of the numbers, 90.3 pass blocking, 80.6 run blocking. You know, another kind of things that, that stood out to me, again, according to pro football focus, zero sacks allowed kind of you know, goes with what you're saying, not very many mistakes, four pressures, you know, so it just seems like a, a really solid thing. With those things in line, can you speak more about maybe uh, what that meant or what that looked like in terms of seeing that data and maybe what it looked like on the field? And, and did it feel like that uh, each and every week? Because again, you look at his weekly performances, it, it's very consistently good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think pro football focus. It's, it's not a perfect science. I mean, it's sometimes you watch a game and then you go back and look at the grades and you're like, that's that's not right. Or maybe you think the game went really poorly for UCF and, and the grades are much higher. I mean, sometimes it's not an exact science, but for Matt Lee, I think it was spot on. Um, you know, his season overall was just a really strong season. I think when you, especially when you consider the quarterback controversy that UCF had this year with Mikey Keene and John Rice Plumley and Later on in the year, Thomas Castellanos gets in there. So the fact that he was snapping to so many quarterbacks and and John Rice being more of a mobile quarterback, Mikey Mikey being more of a you know throw first quarterback, um, the different type of styles and and obviously Gus Malzahn, the offense he runs, he wants to run the football a lot, but also also you know passing is something that's important you know to the style and the shots they take down the field. That's going to change a little bit next year with Darren Henshaw, but this past season. You know, Matt just it didn't matter what quarterback was back there or running back was back there. You know, Matt stayed consistent and, and and really was key to that offense. So Matt, he's had four years in college, redshirt that first year, three year starter, uh, 36 starts there at center. You know, I, you were speaking about quarterbacks, and I, I want to jump right into that, you know, with him kind of looking at his career. You know, he's worked with guys not just pe this past year, but essentially pri new primary quarterback each and every season, going back to with Gabriel Dylan Gabriel, Gabriel there. Uh, what's that like for a center? What, what did Matt kind of do well with that that change of, of a quarterback? And obviously, he'll have a new quarterback uh, this next season at Miami. But what, what was that transition transition like for him? And then kind of just going back again, pro football focus, 75.6 in 2021. So that he definitely increased his, his numbers there, his grading out performance. But like you said, it's not an exact science with those grades and you never know exactly what teams are trying to do. But working with quarterbacks with Matt, uh, what, what what impressed you there? Well, he's worked with some really good quarterbacks. Let's let's say that. I mean, you know, he 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 missed out on Mackenzie Milton, but Dylan Gabriel was you know one of the better quarterbacks in the country at UCF, and they they threw the ball a lot. The offense definitely changed when it went from Josh Heupel to Gus Malzahn, but it was still up tempo, fast football. Uh, and and I think when you can play consistently well at such a high level where you're, you're playing such a high tempo as well, you know, there's there's little room for error. And to run a fast-paced offense uh, that that likes to play with a good tempo, you know, you have to be spot on and, and know what you're doing, understand the plays and know where you have to be and uh, make the right reads and make the right calls up front. And especially as the center, you know, you, you're you're seeing things up front from the defensive line that maybe the quarterback isn't seeing or the running back. And, um, you know, you're maybe you're making some checks at the line. So, 
Um, I think for him to play with so many different quarterbacks, Dylan Gabriel, of course, uh, being his first guy that he played with, um, it says a lot about Matt's ability to, you know, overcome adversity, adapt to different quarterbacks and different styles. And I think also it says a lot about his commitment off the field to develop those relationships with those guys back there and, um, you know, understand the task at hand. And Matt picks Miami over Oklahoma. Certainly other schools would have liked to have added him as well there. You know, you touched on things with some intangible stuff. And my from my perspective, I, I think center, the leadership uh, always stands out to me. A vocal guy, kind of leading the line, whatever that might be. What can you speak about Matt's maybe leadership style or, or the way he kind of presents himself to, to his teammates there? Yeah, he's definitely a vocal guy. I mean, coaches called him a leader on and off the field. Obviously, naturally, centers are going to be important pieces to the offense. They're snapping the ball. They're, you know, calling out plays, calling out different reads and whatnot. Um, I think UCF and players in the locker room looked up to Matt and, and his development. I mean, it's interesting that you mentioned, you know, the pro football focus grades. He improved every single year. And when in 2019, uh, he took the red shirt. 2020 was his first year really starting. He was the starting center. And, you know, this is a, when I when you reached out and he was entering the portal. And I, I kind of looked back at his career. That first or second conference game, UCF traveled to Tulsa. And they that was the first time they had uh, lost on the road that year. Uh, that was the COVID year. It was kind of a weird s- season. You know, the week prior, they played in East Carolina in front of like 50 people. The next week, they have to travel to Tulsa. And, and Matt committed so many penalties in that game. Especially in that fourth quarter, I was looking back at it. It snap infractions, false start, holding, and they lost that game. Not particularly because of him, but a lot of fans, you know, were going on him because of that. And and you know, a lot of fans were wanting him benched. And Josh Heupel talked about how he kind of was disappointed in him, and uh, he was disappointed in himself. I think Matt, to me, what I stood out is he took that first season, that first couple of games, he committed so many penalties. And you look at the number; I think PFF had him at thirteen. He only committed one, maybe two over the next couple seasons. But that season in particular, if you just go to his UCF bio and you see his first year 2020 where he started, they have him as a freshman All-American by the Athletic and a first-team All-Conference player by the American Athletic Conference. You wouldn't think that his first or second game in the conference, he committed so many penalties. And really, I think those first couple starts when he was developing uh, the year prior under Jordan Johnson became that starter. Those first couple starts were bumpy for him. And I think he was so committed to improving as that season went on. Uh, you wouldn't even realize the start he had at UCF as their starting center because it was a rough start. There were a lot of fans that were coming for him. Um, and and he, I remember he tweeted something along the lines of like unbothered and, and something like that. And, and he went on to prove it that season that, you know, he really committed to his craft after those first couple starts and ended up being one of the best centers, uh, you know, in the conference as the years went on. And that same season. Yeah, and that is crazy. And I remember I read the article kind of leading up to this, uh, reading about that. So that's a great explanation of, of kind of what happened there. You know, let, let's stay with that because his career, again, kind of starting in 2019 at, at Oviedo Haggerty High School there, the former three-star recruit. Uh, he gets to UCF and, and, like you said, the struggles early, but also the, the year-after-year thing with the pro football focus. What do you attribute his growth as a player year-to-year getting better and better. And like you said, that season, within the season, he, he got certainly much better by the end of it. What, what do you attribute all this to with, with Matt? Yeah, you know, I mean, you look at the coaching, obviously he's played with multiple coaching staffs. Glenn Ellerby was the offensive line coach under Josh Heupel and now Herb Hand under Gus Malzahn. Um, you know, I think for Matt, you know, it's not like he wasn't taking things seriously, but maybe it was kind of a wake-up call that college football is legit <laughs> and, and you have to take things really seriously. And um, in terms of like in-season progress, like how much can, how much work can you do? But I think he really, you know, nobody is harder on himself. Nobody's are harder on him than himself, right? So maybe, um, you know, internally he just knew that he had to take it up another level. You know, se- season to season, you're in the weight room, you're you're you know putting on muscle, you're becoming more physical. I think him being physical up front is something that coaches talk about all the time about Matt. Um, and it's interesting you you mentioned you know Haggerty High School. It's, it's around the corner from UCF. He grew up in Oviedo, which is down the street from UCF. Um, His dad was, he went to UCF. He had a sister that went to UCF. So he grew up a UCF fan. And and what's interesting about his recruitment is, I was looking back at this as well, he committed to USF before he committed to UCF. It it was in the summer in 2019. And um, he had 
didn't have, I don't know, maybe it was because we just went to high grade high school and maybe a small town vibe, whatever it was, under recruited. Uh, he had offers from Army and Air Force and, and Colgate, some FCS offers. And USF was really his first, you know, major offer, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. Um, but he committed to USF. And then a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks later, he goes to a UCF camp over the summer. They offer him. And within two weeks, he's committed to UCF. And that was his dream school. I remember talking to him about that at the time. Um, you know, he, like I said, he grew up a UCF fan. Um, and, and what's really interesting is I forgot this. He didn't play center in high school. So you can really see where, you know, he was a tackle and played some guard and kind of rotated. But he didn't play center until he got to UCF. So I think maybe the first couple of seasons, he was just so raw at playing center. And, and really that redshirt freshman year in 2019, he was learning a lot about the position in, in 2020. Maybe he learned a little bit on on the go as well um, and, and just continue to improve and, and take it seriously and really, you know, take it up a next level. And you saw that as, as the years went on, it just continued to improve. And the development is, is pretty impressive. You touched on tackle and guard there at Haggerty. He also played a little D-line and tight end, doing some research there. So mm -hmm. certainly an athletic guy that, that can do different things from, from that level. Uh, 6'4", 295 is what he's listed at. Jason, you know, another thing kind of looking at him and his career, UCF obviously been winning games coming off the 9-5 and five season uh, of this past year. They've been running the ball really well. They've had a top three te team rushing in the conference all four years he's been at uh, been at UCF and certainly Miami wants to run the ball. They, they improved from a year ago with this new coaching staff. They want to get closer to the top at the ACC. Miami's not had a top five uh, rushing team in the conference in a long time. Where can Matt help with that? What, what's kind of his strengths in terms of maybe either working with the running backs or just kind of creating lanes, you know, combo blocks or, or, or whatever he might be asked to do in the run game? Yeah, I think creating lanes is, is the number one thing that stands out to me. Um, you know, you, I think if you look at the majority of the runs, you know, sometimes run running backs create plays and find holes that you wouldn't see normally. But I think Matt did such a good job of pushing up front and, and creating those gaps in the middle. Um, you know, of course, Gus Malzahn loves to run those jet sweeps off to the edges and whatnot. But, you know, under Josh Heupel and, and the previous coaching staff, they really ran the ball up the middle a lot. Guys like Adrian Killett and Otis Anderson and um, some of the other running backs they've had over the years. They'd love to run the ball up the middle. And up the middle is where Matt Lee is. So, you know, they rely on Matt's blocking ability, the ability to get to that next level, right? That, that's something that you hear all the time about the offensive line. It's that initial block that's important, but getting to the next level and, and allowing your running back to run down downfield as opposed to east-west, you know, running down down the field is, is something that they did so well. And, and getting to that next level, really creating explosive plays for your running backs and quarterbacks. And, of course, John Rice told me this season – you know, he was he was explosive when he was healthy. Um, he had some injuries down the year with hamstring and whatnot. But when he was healthy and running the football, um, you know, to have that offensive line, his his mobility, uh, you could definitely understand why John Rice was special this year. And, and Matt Lee had a lot to do with that blocking up front. So Matt Lee, just to recap, is Miami's fifth transfer. They've added in a portal, second offensive lineman. They're certainly uh, doing well with trying to revamp the offensive line, get some high-level recruits, you know, with Javian Cohen coming over from Alabama, another all-conference caliber player. Uh, so we'll see how things work on the offensive line. Also, second UCF guy jumping over. And Jason, definitely check out the channel. Jason talked about uh, Brown over there at cornerback that we talked about as well. So it'll be interesting for Miami. Look, they're bringing back – they have Ja'Kai Clark on the roster, 40 career starts – uh, he's played uh, the last two years starting center. So we'll see how everything works out. Spring football, it, it feels like, Jason, I know it's crazy. We just finished the season, but it, it's, it's around just the corner, around the corner. Man. It really yeah, is. It really is. And especially down here in Florida where, where the weather is sim seemingly always nice. Uh, guy, I just got off watching a seven-on-seven -seven event, so football year-round. So, Jason, appreciate you taking the time. Great insight once again. Maybe we'll talk again soon. Absolutely. I didn't think UCF – would have two transfers going to Miami, but here we are. That's that's the age of the new portal world, I guess. So it's it's exciting stuff for sure. I'm interested to see how they do this season. Yeah, everything's on the table. All right, Jason. Thank you.